16, verse 14, for they are the spirits of what? Demons. Demons performing signs or miracles that go out to the what? Kings of the political leaders of the whole world to do what? To gather them to the great day of God Almighty. So what's the battle of the great day of God Almighty? That's the what? Battle of Armageddon. And let's go back a slide. How does the devil get people to come together for that final battle to try to destroy even God's people? Through working false miracles. God can work miracles. But merely because a miracle is worked does not mean that that is divine, supernatural, godly power. Because there can be powers from beneath that works miracle, work miracles. And any so-called miracle that leads you from the word or truth of God, you know is a false miracle. There is only one Savior, and he's Jesus. There is only one word of God, and that's the Bible. And there's only one that we can trust our lives with, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the last thing that we notice about cults tonight is that cults deny individuality. They're trying to force everybody into the same similar mold. You know, creation has incredible diversity, doesn't it? Amen. I think God must have had an amazing sense of humor. I mean, how could God ever make a neck like this? Right. When my kids were young, I said, what do you, what's the reason you want to go to heaven? They said, well, we want to slide down the giraffe's neck. <laughs> I mean, look at this parrot, man. It's an amazing bird. And you look at these fish. I mean, isn't our God incredible? Amen. He makes individual diversity. And God loves variety. Sometimes God says, sometimes people say to me, where did all the races come from? We need to understand where they all come from. It's a simple answer. When God created Adam, he put the genetic material for every human race in the seed of Adam, and it came out like flowers over time. That's a simple Amen. answer. God loves the whites, and God loves the blues, and God loves the reds, and God loves the purples. See, the genetic material was already there in Adam, and it just came out at the right time. All this business about that being a curse, that's not the Bible. Not at all. God loves variety. Amen. That's why I made you how he is. Tall and short. Why? No, no, why? You want to die? No, no. <laughs> I'm going to go back to preaching here. Okay. God has given to each of his creatures the ability to choose, hasn't he? Yes. Once you take that away, do not let anybody else make your moral choices. I have people come to me. Sometimes women come to our meetings and say, Pastor, I know what you're preaching is right, but my husband, he won't let me do this. I say, my dear sister, when you stand before the judgment bar of God, your husband's not going to be there. <laughs> Any woman who accepts Bible truth should be a more loving wife. Amen. She should tell her husband, I love you, honey. Yes. But God's calling me to make a decision. Young people, God's calling me to make a decision. We to respect our parents. But there are times a young person has to go to their parents and say, Mom, Dad, pray with me about this. Mom, Dad, talk to me about this. We discuss these things. But not one individual should ever control the mind of any other human being because the Bible says, Joshua 24, verse 15, choose for yourselves this day whom you'll serve. God has given us human minds and that which lifts us above the animal creation is the ability to make a choice. Don't let anybody rob you for making that choice. Romans 14, verse 12. So that each of us shall give account of who? Himself to God. I was 17 years old. I never heard these truths before. Going to a high school of 3,200. And I didn't know anybody else that knew these truths. But I heard God speaking to my heart to follow his word. God invites us to make positive choices to follow him. We're not to follow the herd mentality. That's what the cult leaders have always led their people to do. And that's why the Antichrist will do at the time of the end. It's this herd mentality. It is the taking away of that vital thing that makes us human beings. And that is the power to choose. You become vulnerable to cult deceptions when you look to any human authority rather than Christ. Amen. You become vulnerable to human deceptions when you accept the teachings of tradition rather than the Word of God. You become vulnerable to cult deceptions when you're awed by spectacular miracles 
rather than simple faith in God's word. You become vulnerable to cult deceptions when you fail to live by your own personal convictions. Jesus says in Matthew 11, verse 28, Come to me, all that are you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. People say to me, Pastor Mark, I'm coming to your meetings, and I'm hearing all this new truth. What should I do? Come to Jesus. Get, play fair with God. Get on your knees and say, Jesus, if this is what you want me to do, I'm not going to battle you. I'm not going to fight you. I'm not going to struggle with you. Lord, if I've never done this before, Lord, if my pastor doesn't teach it, if my minister doesn't teach it, if my priest or rabbi doesn't teach it, if my guru doesn't teach it, Lord, all I'm going to do is play fair with you. I'm going to get on my knees and say, God, if this is what you want me to do, I'm going to do it. The Bible says in Matthew 6, verse 33, but seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be added unto you, Jesus. I'm going to put you first in my life. Come with me to Smyrna. There, 2,000 years ago in Smyrna, once a year, the citizens of Smyrna had to come to this very site and burn incense to the pagan gods of Demeter, the gods of Sidon, Apollo, they came here. There was one, an ancient Christian leader by the name of Polycarp. The day came when they were to burn incense, and Polycarp said, I cannot go. I cannot burn incense. I cannot walk through that arched passageway chamber into the stadium and burn incense. He was a Christian leader, and the Roman government knew that if they did not break his will, that others would step out to follow the living Christ. So, so a, a, a contingent of soldiers came to Polycarp's home. The word Smyrna means sweet-smelling incense. They came to the home of this godly, Bible-believing man. And as they came there, he was about ready to eat his evening meal. And they said, you're under arrest. You are coming for trial to the center of town. And Polycarp said, I only have one request. Number one, you let me pray. And number two, you eat my meal. The soldiers sat that day in his house and ate his meal. And he was 86 years old, and they took him to the center of Smyrna. And as he was taken there, the very marketplace exploded. And we have the ancient records that the archaeologists have discovered. And the crowd began to scream, this is the teacher of Asia. This is the destroyer of our gods. This is the father of the Christians. The Roman emperor looked down at him, and the Roman governor, pro, pro council looked down at him, and he said, old man, I don't care whether you believe or not. Take the incense and do me a favor. I don't want to burn you at the stake. And Polycarp gave one of the most famous speeches. The Roman provincial ruler was Satius Quatrus. And he tries to make Polycarp deny his faith. Polycarp refuses, and he says to him, finally at the end, he's mad. Quatrus is mad, such a kind of mad. He looks at Polycarp, and he says, deny your faith. And Polycarp makes one of the most famous speeches in all Christian literature. He says, 86 years I have served him. And he's done me no ill. How can I blaspheme his name? 86 years I have served him. Jesus will never let you down. Amen. Amen. His grace is sufficient for you. Amen. If you're struggling with some decision and you get on your knees to Christ and say, Jesus, I am yours, yes. he will give you the strength. Amen. He will give you the grace. Yes. He will give you the power to do 